yeah so once again uh, good evening and welcome to this edition of the program for sixth semester ba english this uh, text comes under your elective paper world classics in translation edipus rex is the title provided and the rex can be roughly translated as the king this presentation will have an overview of the play greek theater the authors of the plays and greek tragedy in general and of course an a shorter introduction to edipus the king we'll move with the greek theater first theater as you understand as uh, actually you have uh, studied under your criticism paper under the head of aristotle primarily art is considered as aristotle and plato as imitation and the what they imitate what they imitate is they just imitate for the fun to pretend to be someone else or something else apart from the aesthetic aspect of the play so it is just fun to imitate somebody and it is also a means of communication to demonstrate a situation or a story telling through words and action so this is the two means of uh, having imitation in action and also simultaneously greeks were so eager to please gods especially dionysus and also this is the uh, the play can also be looked upon as a attempt to worship gods and to please them and naturally you can definitely think of a situation in greece where the plays were presented in out of doors or in a flat place called orchestra now the word orchestra is an altogether different meaning earlier orchestra meant a flat place an open place a ground like right as a base on a usually on a base of a hill and at first they just used an open space like something like an open theater now it is no wall ceiling no scenery no background curtain of course no electricity as well. the orchestra was usually circular in shape where people can sit around on three sides and watch the play going on in a open space I mean, which is uh, more or less considered as a kind of a stage the orchestra was the main performing platform for actors of course i will be having certain uh, pictures coming up later to explain this particular point the auditorium is also called theatron i think from this word the word theater derived from theatron was a hillside itself and the audience stood and watched the play there was no seating nobody used to sit and watch the play right rather they stand and watch just like uh, you had groundlings uh, during the time of shakespeare seats were gradually added of course seats were added much later eventually permanent seats were even constructed of stone and later theater became a reality and you have uh, fixed seats made of stones and you have a elevated uh, platform called stage and you also have curtains and other activities coming up much later not in it then the altar of god dionysus dionysus is the son of zeus and he is also hailed as the god of wine and revelry naturally he had a very prominent place in the uh, orchestra of gods called the thymel was always located in the middle of each side so every play would uh, function or begin as a worship towards uh, dionysus just like you have uh, a sutradhar uh, doing nandi in the beginning of a sanskrit play that we discussed under the play karnabar later in the 5th century bc a scene was added scene is a kind of a building right almost similar to the word uh, scene or scene house was added actually it provided a place where the actors might dress and wait before going to the stage there was a kind of a uh, what you call nowadays as a green room you have a scene or a building that was added eventually they used to add play background and scenery to the stage as well as properties this was all a later addition actually during the time of uh, sophocles uh, such things were not available 
attending place was considered a civic duty in those it was part of the activity not a part of an entertainment people used to gather around on a special occasion just like you, you go to a temple where a, a, a festival is going on just like our trishur pur where uh, people of trishur from all different parts of the world assemble on that particular day right <coughs> so uh, this particular event was considered as a duty trishur, many of the people of trishur considered as a, a duty to uh, come and attend the puram on that particular day even uh, in our koilandi we have uh, what is called uh, a temple called uh, kollam pishari gavata where people would come in large numbers so many of them would consider as it as part of their duty to attend this particular program right and uh, uh, there was no such thing called entertainment in those days nobody looked upon drama as entertainment but rather as part of their life. the price of a ticket was uh, two obols which was equal to the wages of unskilled man might even a, uh, earn a day's work so it it was a bit expensive either right so you need to spend of course if you do a casual labor or a physical labor now i think you you are paid normally a physical labor is paid around maybe 700 or 800 rupees today in those days the the coin of uh, the currency that was prevailing in those uh, days it would be similar to that of a wage earner earning the wage that a wage earner earns a day something like 700 rupees nowadays there was a special fund that citizens could apply for to receive money if they could not afford the ticket of their of course there was also a free ticket available if you are not uh, uh, maybe rich enough or maybe uh, you, you you don't have money to buy a ticket for the show you are given a free ticket on a separate kind of a quota maybe right so what i am trying to tell you is that this particular activity of uh, So theater watching has become something very common in those days now let us uh, look at sobol uh, this is a uh, statue erected of course uh, a bronze statue usually in those days and you understand that uh, he was born in colonis where i think there is a play by him uh, edipus at colonis a small town outside athens greek in 495 bc these are all assumptions we assume that he was born in this particular day and i have given you a map uh, indicating the place where he was born in greece right this is a map corresponding to those days not corresponding to the present day right okay as a young boy sophocles was prized for his exceptional abilities in poetry music and dance he was a multifaceted or multi talented person he began as a performer at the age of 15 and was often to perform at a celebration in athens so as you understand in those days people would uh, gravitate towards city athens athens was a center of all activity and he also moved at the age of 15 and he is appreciated for his excellent performance in poetry drama music and dance he went on to become an established playwright of athens he was first recognized as a playwright for winning first prize in an annual theatrical competition when he was actually 18 years 28 years old sorry this was significant because he won the prize over athens predominant playwright and as you understand that he was uh, considered as a predominant writer in athens he had so much appreciation and he was actually hailed as uh, one of the great writers among the great playwrights uh, who were present during that particular time so he was shot to fame instantly uh, as a celebrated right and this is an example he composed over 120 plays and as per the record says uh, out of which 24 actually won the first prize in competition but unfortunately we don't have many of the plays available now we don't have access either lost or maybe uh, we could not trace that only 7 exist today out of 120 meaning 100 
13 plays were lost. Maybe somebody would recover someday. And the most prominent of uh, the plays that are available are listed in the order of their composition. So you understand that Antigone was the first play in this trilogy. Uh, in fact, Sophocles has, com has composed three plays as a trilogy. One, Oedipus Rex, then it is Oedipus at Colonus, then uh, Antigone, three plays. Three plays are actually uh, in a sequence. But Antigone was the first play to be composed, though Antigone historically comes as the last play. Then Electra, Oedipus Rex, uh, then Oedipus at Colon, and I've listed uh, the available or found plays of Sophocles, out of which Oedipus Rex seems to enjoy an unmatched popularity. Right? And definitely, uh, Sophocles actually set the trend of not only Greek plays, but the entire plays of Europe, because entire European uh, playwrights looked upon Sophocles as the model. Though there were many other great writers, uh, contemporaries of Sophocles, he, I think, enjoys an unmatched privilege over other writers. Yeah, major changes that he has brought in, in Greek tragedies, number one. Originally, drama was performed as an open-air theater with few properties and sets. Sophocles expanded using stage machinery utilized technological advances. You can't compare it to modern technology, but technology of those days. And sets. he was the first to use a crane. Crane is a very crude kind of an activity, not the crane of today. Miraculously lower and take away actors. He also used painted scenery, at least as a background. And again, Sorry. Yeah. Again, variations uh, in the types of music sung by the chorus, that also was actually uh, modified by Sophocles. Changed cast size, introduced a third actor and reduced the chorus from 50 people to 12. And as you understand from Aristotle, there is something called unity of action and unity of time and unity of place. And unity of action demands that the play should only come up with a single plot. There should not be a subordinate plot or a secondary plot. So when you tell the story of only one particular character or one particular event, what happens is that you can uh, limit the number of characters to maybe three or five. And Aristotle also insisted that number of characters should be limited to five or six. But uh, normally in a Greek play, you don't have many characters. You have a chorus which consists of about six to 10 people and also three, four characters who are the major characters. Even in uh, the play that we studied last time, that is uh, Karnabaram, you don't see many characters. There are only three characters on stage but other characters are just mentioned. Here also, you don't have many characters, but three to four characters. So uh, the size of the characters were enhanced. And uh, on the other hand, the number of characters in chorus is reduced. This is another uh, development or maybe refinement that Sophocles put out for uh, the Greek theater. Used more elaborate costumes, including masks. Especially, I told you that uh, chorus used to wear mask. All chorus, I think, would wear mask. Wearing a mask is actually a common scenario. scenario. And you even have a separate entity in drama called masquerade. It's called mask, where Shakespeare and all uh, uh, later incorporated this particular structure in many of his plays. Mask is an area where people wear mask and dress. I think from there, uh, we have evolved the modern uh, art form called mime. You have mime for your college festival or youth festival, which is actually an idea that has been developed from 
uh, this particular mask. How do you think Sof Sophocles' uh, new ideas have changed? We will just look at that in the next slide. More complex plot development due to added characters. When you have one more character, the plot can be further complicated. You can bring in more action and costumes allow them to portray more characters, right? So you, you just can't think of a character without a costume. So however small the costume is, however uh, minute the costume is, that gives a added diamond. For example, if you present an old man, if you can uh, manage a gray hair or by a wig or some other activity or some other uh, in, uh, genius uh, masquerading, that is better. Uh, immediately, the audience will understand that he's an aged man. You cannot present a man with black hair and uh, make him or her uh, act like a old man or woman. So costumes will definitely make or add a new dimension in the presentation of the play. Easier to distinguish sets. See, when you have a background scenery of uh, a sea or a garden, instantly the audience will understand the situation, right? Or the scene will instantly be understood without any explanation, right? Easier to distinguish sets, more developed set doesn't leave quite uh, as much up to the imagination. So if you want to see the night, you, you present a starry background. If you want to present a background of the garden, you just uh, show a garden. So instantly the audience will understand that it's a garden or it's a night. Easier to distinguish characters due to costuming and elaborate mask. And just like you understand that, I can just give an idea that in earlier Greek drama, people used to wear uh, boots and socks. And it was uh, said that in those days, tragic characters would wear a shoe called the basket, a thick heeled shoe. Whereas comic characters would wear socks. The idea is that when the character comes to the stage, instantly the audience will understand whether it's a tragic character or comic character by just looking at his feet. If he's wearing a shoe, he's a tragic character. If he's wearing a socks, he's a comic. And why this is done is majority of the audience are illiterate people. They don't have uh, formal education. So it is very difficult for them to understand the text or the language that is used in drama and interpret themselves. So that is the primary reason. And even in Shakespeare, who I think Shakespeare uh, almost came after uh, 1,400 years later than so forth. Even in Shakespeare, you have this particular problem. Shakespeare wrote beautiful poetry for the educated people and also the uh, vulgar. The common people were not actually uh, let off. They were taken care of by uh, him by using the ordinary vernacular language and the puns and jokes and especially the body jokes that Shakespeare had was for the ground game. Easier to distinguish characters due to uh, costuming, interesting unexpected events by using machinery. Sophocles was said to have been especially blessed by the Greek gods because he was attractive and he had exceptional abilities of writing. Mm -hmm. Society had much admiration and deep respect for him. He was, uh, during his time, he was hailed as a great writer, something like Kalidasa, right, who had enjoyed uh, an unmatched uh, reputation. And because of the impact he made on their lives, all Athens mourned upon his death in 406 BC. And they even established a shrine called Dexian, the entertainer for him. Members of society would pay respect annually and do, but just like they commemorate, just like many of us would commemorate our national leader like Gandhiji, Nehru, or maybe our uh, former president, Abdul Kalam. So on the date of uh, death, date, uh, date of death or de uh, death anniversary, we would celebrate or we would uh, pay homage to them. So we'll just look at Greek tragedy as such. I'm just presenting this particular uh, presentation with a uh, point or focus on Oedipus the king. 
Sophocles, the playwright of the Oedipus, the king, is known as one of the most popular tragedies of all time. Not only that time of all time. This is a set as a classic example of a tragedy. They are considered as theatrical works produced mainly in Greece during the fifth century BC, and this is a golden age of Greek literature, where you have number of blessed writers. Apart from Sophocles, you have Euripides, Aeschylus, and also comedian Aristophanes. All these were writers of great talents, but of course, Sophocles uh, surpassed them all in his uh, ability to transform. Uh, or maybe create great plays greek tragedies deal with the universal issue and sophocles is not uh, oedipus rex is not an exception deal with the universal issue and with contemporary politics and topics themes of war incest and murder right we have all this in our play. often times the tragedies involve the hero in changing between states and fortune and misfortune because any tragedy would make the hero or the central character travel through or go through both ups and downs misfortunes and fortune heroes flows and errs the flow of the hero which is called hamarsia by aristotle and errs were pointed out followed by hero's recognition of his action and recognition is called anagnorisis in a play at some point of time towards the end hero uh, recognizes his mistake and a ground and there is also peripetia or reversal of situation i think we, all these terms are familiar to you since you have done your ed start example oedipus the king oedipus i'll just tell you how it is that most tragedies were written as connected tragedies that carried a similar story line and oedipus rex i told you is written as a trilogy dealing with oedipus the rex on one side maybe uh, oedipus at colon and then Antigone. Three plays are written in one trilogy. In ancient Greek times, tragedies were intended to be performed in a theater before a live audience, normally. And all these plays are performed live to a very live audience or who is present, right? And of course, you cannot have any other. a way of presentation because there was no recording possible in those days tragedies were produced and performed during the religious festival especially to honor dionysus that i already mentioned and the playwright completed uh, competed against each other and prizes were i mean there was some kind of uh, categorization or maybe uh, evaluation done and uh, at the end of every year's festival one particular play or playwright is hailed as the best one greek tragedy structure of a greek tragedy is what follows one this is important for your essay prologue spoken by one or two characters before the chorus appears the prologue usually gives a background information needed to understand the events of the play as i told you earlier uh, following i think many of the greek tragedies uh, followed aristotelian dictum that they presented only one story and they also followed unities of time where the play actually happens uh, in 24 hours 24 hours is a maximum duration of the play so if a play has to be completed over 24 hours you have no other way other than doing a flashback because no story becomes complete in 24 hours so you what do you do normally is that you narrate the past and also come to the present and move to the end so usually greek plays begin before the end just before the end and the entire past is being narrated then you move to the catastrophe or end of the play normally right our play is somewhat similar to that then there is second activity called parados p a r o d o s parados is a song sung by the chorus as it makes the entrance we also have this in our play then there are episodes or scenes where the main action takes place act 1 act 2 act 3 like that right then there is odes this you are actually familiar with odes a song often in the form accompanied with the dance 
that reflects on the events of the episodes and waves the weaves the plot into a cohesive whole so they just mix it up everything all these different episodes are put together or binded together by oaths which is a song accompanied by dance and then uh, you have the last activity choragos choragos is a leader who of the chorus who often interact with the characters in the scene this happens at times in the play but majority of the time doesn't happen uh, in oedipus rex we don't have a choragos then chorus chorus is a singers or dancers who remark on the action react as the playwright hope the audience feel on two occasions strophe the movement of the chorus from right to left and the strophe the reaction of the strophe that it moves from left to right then there is also a standstill called epo sorry that is not there there is there are three movements one strophe then you have and the strophe then a third one called epo epo is e p o d e where they stand still so what is the role of a chorus chorus is something like as we studied last time the sutradhar that is uh, sutradhar is neither inside the play nor outside the play similarly chorus is neither inside the play nor outside the play absolutely so they don't have a role to perform in the play but they will comment on each and every activity because the director or the writer of a play cannot come on the stage and comment on characters like what you have in novel in drama no writer can have an appearance on stage so chorus often acts as a deputy of the writer whatever the writer wanted to communicate to the audience he or she would put it on chorus so chorus would communicate to the audience the main purpose of the chorus is to integrate the audience to the play provide necessary background information comment on characters and even at times they would anticipate certain events chorus is by amateur actors as you see on the stage the, all the photographs that i am going to show you are from modern versions it is not from the past right so the modern versions of oedipus they made use of chorus in the old fashion that is why you see the costumes elaborate costumes are used and all this is they are, they are they are made up right not the uh, chorus of the past in oedipus rex the chorus acts like a character as well as a group of citizens oedipus we have a group of uh, old men as chorus they are used to set the mood and heighten the dramatic effects the chorus adds a movement of song and dance continuation they usually entered just after the opening of the play and reminded oh sorry and remained on stage until the end they remained on sides right and at times they come to the friend and comment on the character or maybe the action during the part they periodically stopped moving to allow the audience to consider what they are saying okay they also would intervene and then comment on the characters but of course their comments are not heard by the characters I mean, uh, uh, that, that is a convention. They might hear it, but they would react or behave as if they have not heard. The chorus usually wore similar masks to unify them as a group. So I have given you example of certain masks. But actors wore them to distinguish between various characters. And the next picture that you see on this slide is an example of. uh a stage which is surrounded on three sides with a gallery this is an exact example of theater rock that way i was talking about the beginning where the open place where you see is a stage where characters come and act they have a semi circular platform and all through the three sides people would sit and watch right since uh, all greek actors were men it was necessary to wear masks in order to portray female characters that is also another issue there was no female characters available so female characters were acted by men themselves 
so wearing a mask is always important because you have to hide the masculine uh, identity like something like a mustache or something like that, or bear beard so they also wear masks especially when they portray women or women characters since there were all three parts masks allowed for more characters to be portrayed so if the player has to the actor has to play two different roles what he can do is that he can just go back change the mask and come back and or do the rest of the play each character has a different mask so the three actors had to be highly skilled individuals to portray each role appropriately see if one actor has to play three roles then he has to have exceptional skill of acting then only he can perhaps come and uh, play three different roles uh, all performers were men as you understand however anyone could attend theater production women characters were not women never used to play a character in those days exodus sung by the chorus as it make a final exit this is the last part exodus which usually offers words of wisdom related to actions and outcome of the play something similar to bharata vakyam what we had in uh, karnavar right exodus uh, is a kind of a uh, conclusion that the chorus makes from the entire action of the play and it is their message to the audience so you understand what exactly is the audience want to understand dramatic irony is something very significant we have at least three or four occasions in our play which can be adequately pointed out as a good example of dramatic irony an occasion where audiences knows more than characters that they know at the time of acting because uh, at one point of time only edipus never knew that he is the center of all these troubles he is the only person who is guilty of all this only he doesn't know but all of the characters all the entire audience they know that he edipus is the person who has brought this uh, tragedy to see dramatic irony makes the audience feel privileged and engaged so the hints are already given so they will watch with great enthusiasm just like you have the story uh, mahabharata or karnavara so when you take up a story from ramayana or mahabharata which is the classic epics of india everybody know the story the story has nothing no surprise everybody would know that karna will ultimately be killed by arjuna but still you just watch the play just to see what exactly happens there knowing fully well what is the outcome dramatic irony is used the first time in sophocles and oedipus rex so you need to understand that oedipus is already a familiar story to the greek audience they have already known the story just like the mahabharata story that indians who any indian would know so oedipus is already a familiar story still they come to watch the play just to see how it is presented right so whenever oedipus makes a statement the entire audience would know that oedipus is the victim oedipus is the person who has brought this uh, problems to thebes he is the one person who is responsible for the entire tragedy of thebian but only oedipus doesn't know that he is the person so this i think people had great uh, enjoyment when they actually know the story 